This is the J. Scott Outdoors podcast on Western big game hunting and fishing brought to you by GoHunt.com Insider. Research faster, hunt more. Go to GoHunt.com forward slash insider and use the J. Scott promo code when signing up to receive a $50 Kuyu gift card. I'm your host, J. Scott, and I live and breathe hunting and fishing, spending half the year in the field experiencing God's creation. I hope you'll enjoy hearing about our adventures. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today, we're going to have a great show with Jason Harrison, the founder of Kuyu. And the beginning part of this uh, podcast episode is actually going to be Kuyu Live, a recording of the Storm Star uh, Four Season Tent, uh, the Kuyu Live event. You can also catch this full video uh, on the Kuyu website as well as Kuyu's uh, YouTube channel. And then I'm going to dive into an interview with Jason uh, about some new products that Kuyu's coming out with, about some of the uh, different things going on with the business of Kuyu. And I'm um, just going to be a great episode to uh, talk with Jason as always. He's uh, one of my most popular guests. So I want to thank him for being on. I want to thank you guys, the listeners, for giving such great support to uh, my podcast. And I want to encourage you if you want to send me comments or an email, you can do so at jscottoutdoors at gmail.com. Also want to make sure you're following along the adventures of uh, what we got going this spring at my Instagram uh, page, which is at jscottoutdoors and my associate Dar Colburn at Dar Colburn. And uh, we've got a bunch of spring turkey hunts lined up, uh, both Merriam's, uh, several Merriam's hunts here in Arizona and New Mexico. And then I've got some Gould's hunts here in Arizona and then uh, Gould's turkey down in Mexico with my business, uh, Colburn and Scott Outfitters and Gould's turkey hunt.com. So uh, follow along, check out our photos and I appreciate all the support uh, you can also go on our website, jscottoutdoors.com. Uh, thank you for all of your support and all the positive comments. Uh, appreciate if you haven't left a review, uh, leave positive comments on iTunes. That helps our placement. And uh, this podcast just continues to uh, bless me and I get feedback from listeners and Hope that it blesses you as well and, and that you find a good value in it. I want to remind you that the New Mexico big game uh, regulations, the applications are due uh, March 23rd here. And also we're going to be talking about Colorado uh, here in some upcoming episodes. But the deadline for Colorado is April 5th. So uh, make sure you're applying in these western states to get some of these premium tags. Uh, guys, let's get right to the episode with Jason Hairston. Hey everybody, welcome to Kuyu Live, our first live product release of 2016. And we've got an amazing product to show you today, our new Stormstar Four Season Tent. I'm here with Brendan Burns, welcome. Thanks, glad welcome to be to the here. first Kuyu Live event. It's great to have to start you. with. Yep. Uh, I have Brendan here because he's been an uh, integral part of the design development and has personally spent a ton of time in this tent. He's also put it out to a lot of our guides and outfitters that we work with in some pretty inhospitable conditions and terrain. Yeah, it's been fully tested. We're, we're feeling <laughs> yeah, good about this. Yep. And so we want to take you today uh, quickly through some of the technical uh, materials and uh, why we designed the tent the way we did, some of the advantages of this tent versus other choices that are out there in the market and why we believe this is the best choice of a four season tent specific for hunting. Yeah. And we put a lot of thought into what we need. And this has been a project that's been in development since we started uh, the development of our first tent program. We wanted to create a four season tent uh, really that would outperform what other choices are out there in the market. And we have studied the competitions, uh, tents, yep. we've, uh, I know you've personally spent a ton of time in different four season tents. In the competitions tent, in 
in mountaineering tents and every tent, we, there was there was always stuff that was missing. And so it, when it came down to it, if you could design a tent that was the perfect four season tent and still maintain, you know, your sub six pound lightweight, yeah, practical design for two guys to hunt out of, like what would you do? And so that's that's how we yeah. went. Yeah, I this. mean, and just take us through what what some of the shortcomings are of the other tents that are out there because there's some great tents. A lot of guys say, you know, why should I uh, ever choose a Kuyu tent versus some of the other choices out there, like a Hilleberg? And they are great tents, and they're, yep. they're uh, like a Hilleberg's really, really bomb-proof. Yep. Um, and uh, but it comes with some limitations. So, yeah. so it, uh, the practical space where two guys, you know, as a hunter versus a mountaineer, you have a lot of gear. They have a lot of gear, but we have a lot of gear. And you I know, know our customers are bigger than a lot of climbers. Yeah. So what we designed, we designed it to be practical and functional for two guys to hunt out. You have equal and own space, double vestibule. A lot of the mountaineering tents that are in this weight class are front loaders. I personally, anybody who uses it, a front loader is not a great tent to hunt out. You got to climb over your stuff. You yeah, you're in and out napping. too much. Yeah. You're cooking in and out. It's just it doesn't it doesn't work as good as a, a double vestibule yeah. side load. Well, I know you had a Hilleberg when we went to New Zealand a couple years ago, and in looking at that tent when you spent the night in it, I couldn't believe the amount of condensation that was in yeah. that tent yeah. and how that was acceptable. And I guess it was just an accepted sacrifice for a yeah. lot of the four season tents. Yeah. Yeah. So more breathable, more room, okay. practical space, more comfortable. I mean, yeah. two guys can sleep shoulder to shoulder in this. So let's, I'm going to take you guys through some of the technical details, and then Brendan's going to uh, talk a little bit about his thoughts on, on some of the, the designs and the dimensions and, and some of the thought we had into it. But uh, I think I'll start with a really unique material that we have built into the, the stress-loaded seams, and that's what we call X-Pack, which is a really durable fabric that was made for sales and uh, it's it's great for a four season tent because it is incredibly tough incredibly durable and it doesn't stretch which is key because the these outer fabrics in our tents as you probably experienced when they get wet or cold they will uh, relax shrink or expand shrink yeah. and expand and then in you know cold wet weather or in a storm when that when that's fabric relaxes you don't have the tension on the pull structure and it makes it more and, and it allows it to to cave in a little bit and can collect wind and you know stress load the tent and the poles so x-pack does a couple things it doesn't stretch and then how we designed it into these seams it really takes a single seam that would normally be stressed and spreads it out over three seams on its stress points and then uh, the connection points on our pole structure are x-pack as well so it's uh, it lets us accomplish uh, and increase the durability and the the overall tension and structure of this tent uh, with this material, which is which is incredible. And there's some mountaineering brands that use this uh, particular material on tents designed to go up on like Everest because of the really high wind conditions. And it's been proven uh, uh, material for for this type of a tent and this type of these types of conditions. Uh, this tent has a 30 denier double ripstop tent fly fabric and then a 40 denier ripstop floor, a double ripstop floor as well. And uh, we, this is a higher denier than what you're going to find in our Mountain Star tents because we need typically more durability in a four season. You're going to sacrifice a little bit of weight for, for more durability in, in tough weather conditions. And then the difference between, you'll see between our Mountain Star tent and our storm star is how the fly is designed. So it's going to come down to the ground versus having more space. And that's done to keep the wind from getting underneath and catching the tents and, and potentially flipping it over or pulling stakes out. And it's also going to keep spin drift and snow uh, from blowing up as much underneath the, underneath the tent. And then another feature you'll find in four season tents is the material that we use on the tent body instead of just mesh uh, like you'll find on the storm star we use it what's called a breathable fabric and this is a 30 denier fabric that is uncoated so you're going to get the ability for it to breathe um, and let moisture and condensation go through this fabric it is treated with dwr so moisture gets on it, it's going to beat up and run off and uh, that's done in a four season to deal with the snow and the spin drift and I know I've spent some time in the Mountain Star in uh, some conditions where, the, where it snowed unexpectedly and, and have had a lot of snow actually inside the tent body, you know, building up on your sleeping bag. So this will fix that problem. 
we still do have a, uh, a mesh uh, screen door on the Storm Star, so you can zip it open, increase the breathability if there's, if there's no snow, um, give you more visibility inside, out, from inside the tent to the outside. And so you can, uh, you can still unzip this and have the advantages of a mesh. So uh, another design feature on this tent that's been different from our past Storm Stars is, roll this open so maybe we can get a shot inside here, was a trapezoidal floor design, which so, you really came up with. Yeah, well the, the big difference is it's designed to be practical for two guys to sleep in. So you're naturally wider at your shoulders. Two guys, uh, the, the industry standard is between 48 and 50 inches, 46 and 50 inches on most four season two person tents. So we decided to, uh, it's the same at the bottom, 46 inches at the bottom, but it's 56 at top. Two guys, two big guys can sleep in this tent shoulder to shoulder without being in your really in, comfortably, in yeah. their space. So doesn't increase it a lot, doesn't increase a lot of weight, doesn't, it just makes it more functional for two people. No one sleeps head to foot. Um, and it, we designed it so that the, the, the wide end, the 56 inch end is to be set up normally as two guys hunting would be, you would put it you know, slightly head up or into the wind if you can, but um, to make it more comfortable because nobody wants to get, you know, the downward side or the, sure. or the bottom. So two guys on one end. And then as a bit of a change in, in the tent design from the, the Mountain Star is, because we know it's going to be in high wind conditions and bad weather, this tent is designed to be positioned with one side to go into the wind. And we designed the vestibules to take that into account. So they both open the same direction. So if the wind's coming into this tent, it's not going to blow in and catch the vestibules and put stress on the tent and, and blow uh, snow or weather back up inside. So you can unzip this and have the wind protection uh, with the way that we designed these vestibules. And then we did, uh, one of the downsides to most four season tents is condensation. Breathability. And breathability issues. So uh, to counteract that, we've built in two pretty robust vents on both sides of the tent at these locations. And you can access them from the inside with a zipper, so you can zip them shut. Uh, if the weather gets really bad and it's blowing, blowing uh, rain or snow up under the vents, but to be able to open up and get airflow through the tent. The, 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 the wide design, everyone that tested the tent noticed the difference, and it's one of the, one of the, one of the great things about this tent is yeah. everybody that used it noticed. The trapezoidal floor. Yeah, yeah. The, the extra room to sleep in there, the design. Two guys can sit up, cook on one side, on the other. Everybody has their own space, um, which was a huge hit. Yeah, and build access, you have your own access point. No one's crawling over somebody is, is fantastic. Uh, the other thing that we've done on this tent is we've, uh, we've, we have a lot of guidelines that went off of this thing. Um, back here, like you find on the Storm Star, but you're also gonna find uh, locations on the, on the tent fly here and here. So you're able to guideline the guide line this thing out and really make sure that it's secure in bad weather. And you'll notice on at the pole locations that this webbing's uh, a little bit longer than what you're gonna find on the fly. And that's designed to wrap this webbing around the, around the poles and to use the poles to help secure the guide lines and really tighten up this structure. As you'll notice on this tent, um, we use the same hoop and truss design that we've done on the Mountain Star that we really like and believe in because it, this design preloads the poles versus just a design as you'll see in some other tents where it's a crossing pole structure. The downside to a crossing pole structure is that there's, there's no tension on the poles unless it's guy lined out and you create that tension through guy lines, that tent will collapse in the wind with a crossing pole design. With a hoop and truss, because it's preloaded, that doesn't happen. And then uh, on the Storm Star versus the Mountain Star, we brought this truss pole all the way down to the ground connected to, uh, to the fly, which, which truly makes it a four season with, tent. With the outer skeleton, you can set this thing up in any conditions anywhere. Super high wind, rain, wet, everything comes in from the so, outside, you stake it out. Yep. And so take us a little bit through the times and locations you spent in it, and then also some of the guides and outfitters you've, you've given it to, to test. We sent out about, oh, over the course of the, of the project, about 15 tents total, uh, all different locations, several different models as stuff was being changed. Um, it, um, Bull and Lewis had several, Lance Kronberger, Freelance Outdoor Adventures. 
Willie Hedinger, Johnny Niker. I mean, a lot of guys that like uh, there was a ten, uh, one we sent one up to NWT Outfitters. Um, they've been all over the place. My one buddy took it to Outer Mongolia. I mean, it, uh, it went Tiburon last week. They were using it. It's, I mean, it's been it's been all over. Um, and we basically just wanted to make sure that what we thought we wanted a tent, um, guys that were using it, and, and and we needed to get exposed some horrible conditions. And, yeah. Uh, and we did it. So take us through some of the worst conditions you've tested in. I, I had two hunts this fall. I spent 34 days in this tent this fall. One in uh, in the Chugach in Alaska, which you can see on the blog. Um, we got three days of great weather and, and six days of worse weather, absolutely pounding rain, high wind. Uh, a, a lot of times during the daytime it was super static, so there was no wind, but raining really hard where you test the breathability and you know how much condensation it's gonna build up. And uh, you know, two of us, we were comfortable for, for seven days in, in, in adverse conditions. And then I spent uh, another 24 in, uh, in the Bob Marshall in Montana and uh, some snow, some rain, some high wind, some really high wind, up to 60 miles an hour thing performs great. I mean, I had it set up exposed several times where just didn't have any other place to camp and uh, just pass with flying color. Yeah. Everything I looked for in a tent that is going to be able to take, that you could take anywhere is... is and I know, we, I know last winter we tested, put a prototype up at your house because you yep. live in Bozeman. Yeah, Just to yard. put it in feet of snow conditions, right? Yeah. To see what the snow loads would do. Any, any... Had it up for like 100 days. My kid loved playing in it, but it nothing, it was, you know, great. I, at one point in time, there's probably this much snow on top of it. No... no didn't the, collapse? No, no collapse, nothing. Didn't, didn't affect anything. And so one, one thing to note on this tent is it only comes with aluminum poles, a little bit bigger diameter than what we offer with, with the Mountain Star. Carbon poles are great as far as weight savers, uh, and they are very stiff, and uh, they, those are the advantages of the carbon. The downside to carbon is they can point load and, and fail, and a carbon pole won't do that, it will bend, or excuse me, aluminum pole won't do that, it will bend. Uh, and so that's why we have uh, just aluminum poles here on the, on the Mountain Star tent, or storm, excuse me, the Storm Star tent. And then uh, one last thing I want to cover is the waterproof ratings of the materials that we put on this tent. So the Fly has a, a 3,000 uh, waterproof rating and the floor has a 5,000, which is a couple levels up from what we, we need and, and put on to the Mountain Star tent just to give it um, additional weather protection for it's really adverse. <laughs> it's waterproof. It's waterproof. Adverse con conditions. Yeah. So, so. Um, I think that covers it. Wait. Um, oh, yes, wait. So, unpackaged. So, minimum, minimum weight is only five pounds, uh, five pounds, 5.2 ounces. Packaged weight, that's with the stakes, with the stuff sacks, is five pounds. And 14 ounces, and you can also, as with the Mountain Star tent, the fly or the tent body um, is you can clip out yeah. and take out, and you can just run, just run the uh, the fly weight and, and a footprint, and that's four pounds and two ounces. And we do offer a footprint for this tent, like we do with the Mountain Star, and the fly only setup is only three pounds and uh, 10 ounces. So you can you have lots of options with this. Yeah, and, and we're not going to be able to show it super well, but there's uh, there's a really good positioning of a lot of pocketing on the inside of the tent oh, yeah, for, for all your storage. Everything's well thought out. Where would you put your satellite phone? Where would you put your, you know, everything, er, any pla practical place where it doesn't, um, where where you where you would need to get to your stuff. There's a pocket on the inside of the tent. Yeah, and then just one last thing. I did, I don't know that I covered really well because we've covered it with Mountain Star. But those of you that aren't familiar with the Mountain Star tent. Our tents are designed with an exterior pole design, so the structure is put on the outside of the fly. A lot of tents, that's not the case. The pole structure is connected to the tent body on the inside, and then the fly is uh, thrown over the top. I believe uh, our design is better for hunting because we're never in a situation where we don't have the fly over the tent. Yeah. By putting the fly underneath the pole structure connected to the body, you can now set this tent up in bad weather and not have the weather get inside. Also, tent flies located over the top of the poles have a tendency to get uh, abrasion and wear from the, pole, from the pole over time. So you get a more durable, a faster setting up tent. And I think it's just a much more efficient design for hunting. Does that cover it? Would yeah. Say anything? I mean, the best thing I can say about this, we, we set out with the goal of designing a sub six pound, practical, two man, go anywhere hunting, four season tent. And we, we've done it. I mean, yeah. it's a, it's just, there's nothing I would want to add to this tent. Yeah, I don't know that we've missed anything on this thing. At GoHunt.com, we are restoring the heritage of the old and constantly redefining the new. 
we stay focused and put our efforts into redefining the future of Western hunting. What makes us special? What makes us different? We are the new breed of hunter. We are the customers that we serve. We are the innovators and we are the future. Visit GoHunt.com slash insider and join the movement. Use the J. Scott promo code when signing up and receive a $50 Kuyu gift card. Since 1982, the Outdoorsman's in Phoenix has made it their goal to provide the very best customer service combined with the latest and greatest optics and accessories in the business. Outdoorsman's is the leading designer and manufacturer of high-quality tripods and mounting accessories for any hunter's optical needs. Go to Outdoorsman's.com or call 1-800-291-8065 and use the J. Scott promo code until February 28th to receive 10% off all Outdoorsman's packs and pack accessories. Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today we have Jason Harrison of Kuyu, the founder of Kuyu. Jason, how you doing? I'm doing great, Jay. Thanks for having me on. I, I always love our time together and uh, appreciate your interest in, in having me on the show. Absolutely, buddy. I've seen you in the last couple of uh, trade shows in passing, uh, every time I've gone by the Kuyu booth at SCI or at the Western Hunting Expo, it was literally people stacked in there like sardines and <laughs> people trying stuff on and you had stuff over each shoulder and uh, it was awesome. How, did, how was the trade show season for you? Uh, trade show season is incredible. I really enjoy the firsthand experience with our customers. I, we get such a massive response and it's funny because every year we keep expanding the booth, keep adding more people to the booth to help the demand, and the demand keeps growing and growing and growing, and we get people still stacked up and waiting. We think we're going to, you know, next year we'll fix that problem. And uh, the demand just keeps to keeps growing, and the response to the brand continues to expand. It's it's so humbling and exciting to see. I just I I just pinch myself every Monday when I walk in here to to see what's happened to this brand in less than five years. It's just staggering. It is. It's, um, you know, I, I read an article uh, in Bloomberg, actually posted it on my blog, and I know you had it on the Kuyu blog as well. Um, and that was a phenomenal interview. What is it about your customers and the feedback that you get from your customers um, that is so rewarding for you? What aspect of, of, of the feedback is so rewarding? Well, it's, it's the, the loyalty and commitment to the brand that is unlike I've ever seen before, especially from this type of customer base. And I think that really comes from being totally transparent, involving the customers in a lot of the decisions that we make, listening to them, making them feel truly part of the family, which is you know, my, my approach to this business. We talk about it every day here at the office. It's a one customer at a time company. Our focus is servicing our customers. It's not about the end result of a financial gain or, or anything to do with the money. It's about servicing our customers with great service, great products, solving problems for them that they have either in the mountains or in, in, in other aspects of their lives that we can help with, and uh, wrap your arms around them so they'll never leave the brand. And, and focusing on the little things that we do every single day, whether it's a handwritten thank you note, I think, is what has created this commitment and loyalty to what we're doing here at Kuyu and really creating I mean, a, a true movement of of how to build a company, how to build a brand, and how to build a true following and community around around Kuyu. It's been something that's as we look at it and have people outside of this business analyze the things that we've done, uh, continue to come back and tell us this has never been done before. And you know, my focus when I started this thing was really to you know, focus, like I said, on the customers and out of fear just opening this thing up and being totally transparent to try to build some trust around the products we were making. And in turn, it turned out to be something that's incredibly special and something that's never been done before. And now other people are trying to look at how to copy what we've done and see if they can move it into other markets. And we'll, we'll see if some of these other ventures people are, are modeling their companies after Kuyu, uh, whether they can have success in it or not, or whether we're a u- true unicorn, as people call us. Yeah, for sure. You know, you mentioned the uh, handwritten notes. I had a a friend of mine actually ordered some Kuyu stuff, and he sends me a picture uh, of of, a a, a business card, uh, his address, you know, on the front of the envelope, and it says, 
his name, and it says, thank you for ordering with us today. We are so happy to have you as a Kuyu customer. If there's anything that I can help you with, please consider me your Kutu go-to go girl, Kindy. And here's one of your employees writing a handwritten note. And it wasn't like he ordered, you know, $3,000 worth of stuff. I think he got a, a super down jacket and, and, a, and a pair of pants, you know. It's not like he bought the whole line, which a lot of people do. But to me, that personal touch um, is amazing, and I want to commend you on that. Uh, it's just something that's unheard of with a with a volume of business that you're doing to 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 have the foresight to do those little things that mean a lot to people. They do, and I I'm a real student of business and brand building and customers, and um, you know my focus here has always been to build a remarkable experience around this business. And, you know, I love the word remarkable because it's, if you're doing something that's different and remarkable, people will talk about it. And you can build a brand off of remarkability, especially today with social media, just as you've seen on your social media outlets, how reaching it can be and how powerful and impactful it can be. And so that's what really what we try to focus on. And I love handwritten thank you notes. I, um, something that's gone away in business because of email and text and Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook. And it's so rare to get one these days from a company that it's a remarkable experience again. It used to be very common and it's gone away. And it's those little details that I think that we continue to, and I continue to push my team here every day is not, not to lose what's gotten us here, which is all the details and all the small things. And if we continue to worry about these, all the small little details in our products and our service and how we operate this business, the big things can happen. I watch so many companies get started on the little things and then turn and focus on the bigger things, which is typically because of wanting a return on their investment and lose their way of what got them there. Yeah, and I, I think as well as that, you have to also focus on that things are ever changing and I think that's one of the things that, you know, getting to hunt with you and getting to know you is you know that things are changing and you know that you've got to always be on top of your game. My question would be, like, in the future, um, how much of your time is spent on, you know, innovating and trying to find the next best thing so that you don't become a thing of the past? Yep. And it's kind of a twofold question. As your products get better and better, it's kind of like, man, where can they? How can they get better than this product? And so, how do you handle that? <laughs> it's a great. It's a, it, that's a great question, Jay. One of the one of the. I mean, our main tagline from the beginning has been ultralight hunting, and focusing on reducing weight has. And I've seen the the results from it, like you have. I mean, taking ten pounds out of your pack or four pounds out of your layering system truly has an impact over a long mountain hunt. Without being the underlying focus of this brand, working with companies like Atore, working with companies like the Merino Company that invented New Yarn, and focusing on finding new innovations and technologies that can continue to reduce weight without give up, giving up performance, and focusing on, on never stop, I never stop researching materials and testing materials that can achieve a lighter weight and not give up performance or increase performance. That allows us to continue to reinvent ourselves, I believe, on a regular basis and finding partners on the supply side like a Torre or like a Merino company or um, working with composite materials like carbon fiber. We can continue to look at what's out there and continue to work now with directly with Torre's scientists and development teams on trying to find ways to reduce weight without giving up performance and finding new innovations that we can reinvent our products on a continuous basis allows us to continue to reinvent ourselves, which I believe, like you mentioned, is key to stay relevant and key to stay on top. And this business model that I created, being direct-to-consumer, allows us to continue to reinvent ourselves at a pace that nobody else in our market, and really in any technical apparel or gear market, can compete with us as far as new innovations. And you've seen from the beginning, we continue to push them out on a regular basis faster than it's ever been done before. And we're now being recognized by the outside magazines of the world and the outdoor community as the, as the global leader in innovation, design, and technology, and product advancement, which is great to see. It's the first time it's ever happened from a hunting company, and um, I'm really proud of that. 
obviously, Jason, with that success and with building the products that you have and having the wide range of, of line that you have, obviously, there's going to be people that don't get the product because, quite frankly, uh, it's hard to keep up with the unbelievable demand that you have had over the last five years. I know we've talked about it in prior podcasts, but can you touch on a little bit about what you would say maybe to the person that says, well, I can't get to you. Um, my response usually is, well, you need to order it when it's not two weeks before hunting season. But what would your response be? Well, I think stepping back and looking at how I built this business. And then I think the Bloomberg article is interesting for a lot of people to see. So I don't think most people realize this brand's going to be a $50 million brand this year. And we've done that in just five years. And that's a growth rate that's incredible. It's also a growth rate that I have pulled back the reins on. We could be larger than $50 million this year had I just decided to chase demand by going out and raising money and just buying endless amounts of inventory to meet the demand that's been out there for us. I had done that in the past with Sitka and, then, and went through that process with, with bringing in investors and watching what happened when we quit seeing eye to eye and their ability to force me out of the company that I built. Not wanting to go through that same um, same situation again, I, I built a plan of growth at 110% a year since launch, and we've achieved that right on plan. Now, the demand for the business has been far beyond that, but it's put us now in a position where we're self-funding. I was able to get a large SBA loan this past summer, and if you look at our inventory today, we're at the highest inventory levels across each style, each category, and each product line that we've ever been in at 93% at the start of the year. And going forward, you'll see that the out-of-stock inventory challenges that we've had in the past are a thing of the past. And the challenges that we've had have been put in place by myself so that I can stay in control of this business and not have to bring in professional outside money that, that would change the way this business is run. Instead of being built for the customers, I would have to run this business for the investors. And that whole philosophy changes on the products, on what I make, on how we service the customer, because I have to focus instead of on the customer on the return of their investment. And I, this was all done strategically by plan. And I know people have been frustrated, but there's a reason behind it. Makes total sense. Um, I, I know you went on some unbelievable hunts uh, in 2015. I got to watch the video that's on your YouTube channel and on your on your website uh, there at Kuyu.com uh, of you and Brendan hunting at Nahanni Butte and being the last people to ever hunt there. Um, talk to me a little bit about that experience and how that gear testing you know went on that trip. Well, one of the things I truly believe in is that. If we're going to know whether our gear performs or doesn't perform, it has to be done in the field. We can look at all the data and all the analytics behind the products in, in laboratory testing, but really out in the field is when we'll, we'll know whether it truly delivers. And so I take it upon myself as the owner of the business that I need to be in the, putting myself in those challenging situations like we have at Nahani Butte or on a you know, late season loose hunt like I did in September with my father. Um, to really understand our, our limitations of our product, how to make it better. And that real-world testing just gives us gives me so much personal insight to how to continue to improve and evolve the products. Um, the trip to Nahani was great. I mean, it was certainly a different style of sheep hunt than I've ever done. I've hunted doll sheep at Arctic Red River three times. This is the first time I've hunted doll sheep outside of there. Um, and they use uh, helicopters to access this into some really remote country that's really inaccessible without without a chopper, um, which you know gets us in a little bit further, a little bit closer to the sheep and makes a, a very efficient hunt. It's how they set up their area to hunt. And being in an area that we we're in, knowing that we're the last guys in to hunt it was was a real special feeling, especially Hell Roaring Canyon where we were placed because it's over the years, historically, it's where they've killed a lot of really big old sheep. Not every client can hunt in that country because it's so so steep and so rugged. And Jim had kind of knew we were coming and, and set that aside for Brendan and I to go go in and, and hunt. Particularly Brendan's ram, it's one they'd seen the year before. The sheep I had killed, I don't know if they'd ever seen before, um, but we were just fortunate 
to find that you know that heavy old broomer li- all you know living completely by himself and ended up just what killing, an awesome ram uh just uh, ended up killing a sheep that i never ever anticipated ever see in my lifetime let alone have a chance to make a stock on and be successful in killing a ram like that i mean it's just an absolute ram of of every guide's dream and it's not certainly not a fancy ram as far as long twisted tips but um as you get into sheep hunting you start to understand and appreciate what these guides love which are these old heavy thick nasty broomers like i mean it's what you know too jay um not all clients can understand why that is such a special sheep until you kill one um and get your hands on it but man it's it's certainly the the finest trophy i've ever taken yeah, it was awesome to watch and uh, incredible video. Nice job. Let's take a quick break here, and then I want to ask you about Kuyu and the logo being cheap and what that means to sure. uh, the brand. So let's take a quick break. Have you guys heard about PhoneScope? PhoneScope is a privately held company that makes custom-molded, precisely engineered smartphone digiscoping adapters. Photographing wildlife has never been easier. Take digiscoping photos and videos from your smartphone and share them with your friends. PhoneScope stands behind their product with a 100% money-back guarantee. PhoneScope is the future of digiscoping. Get yours now. Use the JSCOT16 promo code and receive 10% discount on all purchases. Check them out at PhoneScope. That's P-H-O-N-E-S-K-O-P-E dot com or on Instagram at PhoneScope. Wilderness Athlete is committed to improving the health and quality of life for the outdoor athlete by providing field-tested, scientifically validated nutrition and sports performance products. Check them out at wildernessathlete.com and use the J. Scott promo code to receive 10% off any order in February 2016. So Jason, the sheep... The the ram's horn has always been the logo of Kuyu. Why was it important for you at the beginning of starting Kuyu that that be kind of the, the logo of your brand? I believe that sheep hunting really finds the edges on performance of gear because of the remote places we have to go, the weather and the, the rapidly changing conditions we can face from one day to another, the steep climbs, the emotional, mental, and physical sacrifices we'll make on a sheep hunt um, really define what this brand stands for and the level of performance, the level of commitment to the smallest details in our products, the materials we have to choose, has to deliver on a sheep hunt. And the RAM defines that. And it's what we all dream about. I don't think it matters if you're... You grew up in Alabama or California or Montana. We all dream of someday going in on a sheep hunt, and we may not ever achieve it as a, as an individual. But it, but there's certainly, I think, for every hunter, that is the ultimate dream. And we like to sell the dream and create inspiration and create motivation to go chase those things, which you know is every hunter's dream. Absolutely. Uh, Jason, what does Kuyu have coming in the pipeline here with new products uh, here in 2016? Well, we've got a a new tent called the Storm Star, which is kind of the next evolution of the Mountain Star concepts. Uh, We took the external pole design, our hoop and truss, which is really well proven to be very storm and wind worthy because of the way that it preloads those hoops with a truss going over the top, securing securing those hoops to create a really structured design. And the truss, instead of being a short pole, now extends all the way to the ground on both vestibules. And we use that design to develop out a true four-season tent. Compared to what's out there, our focus was to find ways to reduce weight, which is always one of our goals, uh, maintain four-season performance, without just the sacrifice of weight, which is always a challenge. And then um, to increase breathability over what's out there in four-season tent design. And then really focus on the requirements and the needs of of what hunters need in a four-season tent. 
And a lot of it is space. A lot of the mountaineering four season tents are great, but they're just tight. And a lot of the guys that are up on Everest or <clears throat> doing high alpine climbs are small guys, and our clientele is different. So we, we took all of that into consideration when we created the Stormstar prototypes. And it's a project that's been in the pipeline for a long time, and we've spent uh, two full seasons vetting and testing the concept, um, adjusting and changing materials. And you'll see when the tent we released the tent here in March that um, there's been a lot of thought around every single aspect of this tent. If you look at the shape of the floor, instead of just being a typical rectangle shape, we we broadened the shoulder area so that it's a more of a trapezoidal design, so you have more room up in your shoulders for, for bigger people, smaller shape down towards your feet. We positioned the tent so it has a, a, uh, a directional... Uh, design meaning you're going to sleep with your head at one design, w w one end which is the wider shoulder girth that is also going to go into the wind, and the vestibules are all designed around that, along as well as the venting to make sure we maximize breathability. On the seam structure, we took X Pack material, which is a really unique material that is incredibly strong and durable. You'll find it on tents designed for Everest, and we implemented that into our high stress seam lines to maximize durability of this tent in really, really tough conditions. And it's proven out to be a design that is superior above everything else out on the market. And then the great thing about it is, you know, it's just over five pounds, and you get all of this technology and uh, fabric and, and design advancements in a package that only costs 550 bucks because it's in our direct-to-consumer business model. Wow. Well, nor normally the same product would cost you eight hundred and fifty or nine hundred bucks somewhere else. Exactly. And, and, this, and, and this, yeah, and this tent would be eleven $1 hundred dollars with all the with everything that we have into it if we were to turn around and sell it at retail. So you get a gotcha. I mean, you're getting a heck of a tent at five hundred fifty bucks and just over five pounds. Um, I, awesome. I truly believe for the hunting market, it'll redefine the choice for four season four season tents. Awesome. Awesome. What else you got up your sleeve? Well, we, last year we released Peloton, which was our first venture into synthetic knits. And I've been searching for a great synthetic knit program since the beginning. I, I truly believe that some of the synthetic knits are, are a great choice. They're very efficient as far as removing moisture from your body and then getting it out and evaporating it. Different than merino wool because it's a hydrophobic fiber, meaning you know, it hates water, so it wants to get rid of it. And a lot of the knits, like a fleece knit, is, is a great fabric. The challenge I've had is finding one that, that has the level of performance so we can put the Kuyu name on it. And Tore, being Tore, took their, prime, their amazing patented Prime Flex yarn and started developing a knit program for us, which is what we released with Peloton last year in the Peloton uh, 135, the 200 and the 240 series products that have gotten great response, um, have had great reviews from our customers, and we've been thrilled with, with how they've performed in the mountains. And we've taken those knits and we've put them into a whole new range of headwear program for us from a different, you know, some different styles and weights of beanies to balaclavas to neck gaiters, and then also in a Peloton... 135 zip off bottom. So now you have the synthetic bottom, a 200 zip off bottom. So you've got that jersey fleece, really warm, light, mid layer type. With the of same zip, -off, zip off, zip off technology like you had in the merino wool. It, exactly. And then, awesome. yep, it's amazing. And then we built a uh, Peloton 135 boxer brief. So now we have. Um, we can truly, you know, truly skin to shell on a on a layering system using all of all the QU products. Incredible. That sounds great. When When is uh, most of that stuff going to be released? That'll be released in April. Awesome. And you'll see the new catalog. We just finished the proof of the catalog yesterday, and that catalog will be released in April announcing all of these new products. Um, along with that, we added in the a new uh, insulation bottom using uh, essentially, the, all the materials in the Kenai jacket in a zip-off Kenai bottom, nice. which will be an outstanding product for your later season hunts or if you want to use a synthetic over down. 
uh, that comes in a zip off, a zip off style bottom called the Kenai bottom. And so, in, in other words, like the super down pants that are zip off, now you're going to have the Kenai pants in essence with an insulation bottom. Same thing, but it's going to be made with the with the uh, the uh, the synthetic. Yes, but it's a different style. It's like a true mid-layer piece. So it's one that you okay. can, it, it will be the same styling and look of like the Peloton, or excuse me, the Merino 210 bottom that people are used to, or the, with the Peloton 200 that's coming out. Gotcha. So it won't be like a standalone pant that you find with the Superdown. It's a okay. mid-layer type of insulation piece. Because it's an active insulation, guys can hike in it. I want it set up for more like a mid-layer style. It makes more sense for that that particular technology and the insulation. Yeah, and for the listeners out there, Jason, real fast, you did a great video, um, but can you recap the video, the reason you would use the uh, synthetic versus the down in, in sure. more active situations? Yeah, I mean, what's great about down is it's incredibly warm for its weight, and it packs down to nothing. The fact that we use such a high grade of of down, which is, you know, I source and spec all of our down out of Poland. Polish down has bigger clusters because they harvest their geese at an older age in colder climates, so you get a higher grade down feather. And then, as you know, we treat at the nano level with durable water repellency by Torre, so it, those feathers don't ever get wet, which makes it a really versatile piece, and it solves the problems that we've had with down in the past. The only problem we can't solve is that we have to coat the nylon fabrics uh, with a coating to keep the down feathers from pushing through the materials. And that coating essentially makes those fabrics almost um, so they don't breathe. They, they breathe very limited. So if you've been hiking in our down jacket, you get really sweaty in it, um, which is fine if you're, if you're climbing. You don't need the down. You're just going to take it out of your pack and sit, and, and sit behind glass for hours. But if you need to travel in your insulation, that's the negative to down. Where the Kenai product uses a a um, continuous fiber insulation that Tori created so we don't have to coat the fabrics at all. So we can maximize breathability with a, with a 3D FX synthetic. And so you can hike in it. You can breathe, it breathes. It lets the moisture transfer right through it. Um, the downside to it is it's not quite as light, not quite as packable, not quite as warm as down. So there's a trade-off. Um, the other nice thing about Kenai, you never have to worry about moisture. Um, I would argue that you don't have to worry about moisture with their down products, but it's just going to function differently. Uh, it's also the Kenai is incredibly quiet, as you know. You can you can yeah. make a stock in that jacket. You don't have to take it off. Um, it's going to be more versatile, wider range of conditions you can use it in. So, kind of covers a lot of a lot of different aspects depending on the style of hunting you're doing. If a guys going on an ultralight backpack sheep hunt, I recommend Super Down. If they're looking for something that they can take in a wider range of hunts, I recommend Kenai. Utah Hydrographics is in the water transfer printing service and they are open to whatever you can dream up. Choose from a wide range of camel patterns, designs, and colors. Whether it's guns, bows, tools, rifle stocks, vehicles, steering wheels, fenders, dashboards, paint guns, fishing rods, cups, tripods, watches, knife grips, helmets for a local sports team or for your motorcycle, picture frames, mailbox, animal skulls, you name it, they can probably do it. Utah Hydrographics loves taking things that are general looking and turns them into something that looks fantastic and eye-popping. Give them a call and see what they can do for you and receive up to a 10% discount by using the J. Scott 16 promo code. Visit them at utahhydrographics.com or on Instagram at Utah Hydrographics. Whether you are interested in elk, deer, antelope, bighorn sheep, or moose, Western Hunter and Elk Hunter magazines will bring the adventure to your mailbox. These publications feature articles on the finest hunting gear, tips and tactics from experienced hunters, field judging trophies, glassing techniques, calling strategies, and much more. To become a more knowledgeable and skilled hunter, subscribe today. Go to westernhunter.net forward slash jscott and enter your email address for a chance to win a $1,500 credit towards any Swarovski product. Yeah, good description there. I think uh, bow hunting friendly, the keen eye, very quiet. Uh, I really enjoyed using the keen eye all this last season. Yeah, I love uh, it. For sure. Yeah, it's great stuff. Jason, uh, I want to talk to you real quick. I know you got to get running. Uh, some of the biggest hurdles for Kuyu 
and how do you overcome those hurdles now that you've grown into such a force in the industry? You know, some of the, you know, obviously, you know, we'll, we'll face, you know, the growing pains of every business. And that's, um, and, and, and looking at our growth and looking at how to continue to support the amount of demand we're having. We've put a lot of investment in 2015 into our infrastructure, and the biggest being a new website, um, a new website partnership with a platform called Demandware, which is the most advanced e-commerce uh, platform you can possibly invest in. It took us a bit to get qualified to even be a Demandware partner, um, but they're working with really um, top-end brands like a Tory Burch, like GoPro, like Columbia, and we're their first true hunting brand to come into that platform. And that's going to give us a lot of the uh, data and analytics that we've been blind to, which is really the true power of e an e a true e-commerce business. And it's let us do a lot of future planning around inventory, around cash flow requirements, around business requirements that we've been blind to in the past. And so as we analyze that and look at the data and analytics of where this business is going, it's given us um, the ability to kind of see into the future that we haven't had before and start to plan around better inventory purchasing, uh, working more closely with our supply chain on future demand, and work in advance versus just in, in a reactive state. And um, what's hard to know is you know, how deep this demand curve is and how much growth this brand is going to experience over the next 24 months. I've had to hire a sales rep in Europe last year. We hired a sales rep in New Zealand to cover Australia and New Zealand customer requirements and questions and shipping and customs challenges. We've, had, we've hired a second person for Europe that starts this spring. And looking at trying to understand global demand and how to service customers in Europe, how to service customers in Australia, and give them the same brand experience that our customers in the United States achieve. Same with Canada. Um, we have, we've had some challenges with getting product across the border without you know, our customers uh, paying a ton of duty and taxes and tracking packages and getting, getting things through customs in a timely manner. It's been a challenge. And those are the things we really face that we weren't anticipating was this global demand for Kuyu. Um, and that's it's it's something that we recognize and something that, that we're working towards. Um, but it's a big challenge uh, ahead of us is is making sure that we can service our customers on a global basis when we really built this plan out for this business at this point to service just the United States. Awesome! It's awesome to be in that position. Real fast, uh, Kuyu Film Festival. Yeah, exciting! I'm really excited about this. One of the things I love about our customers is how fanatical they are about our brand. All the pictures we get, all the short little video clips we've received from customers over the years, and really wanting to, to create the opportunity for more people to see what people are shooting on film, and to create a platform where people could uh, be recognized for their work, and to uh, let people see what's out there as far as video, to create some awards and recognition around each category, whether you're just an amateur, whether it's a short film, whether it's a long film, whether it's professionally done, or it's your first go at creating some sort of a video piece uh, from your hunt. And uh, I'm excited about having this platform out there to show showcase our customers and some of the videos they've produced. And the response has been well beyond what I anticipated. I think the other day I looked and we had over 50 films in, and the deadline's still not for a couple weeks. And um, so we're going to go through and vet the films. We'll put up, you know, our top, you know, the kind of the top um, 10 or 15 per category that, that we review in-house, and then we'll let the public choose who their favorites are. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's been great having you on with us as always. Uh, I do have to rub a little bit of salt in the wound. It was one of those years this year, and Mexico coos deer hunting that I know I can just say you should have been there with I us, know. buddy. We, we told me. a few good bucks for sure, and uh, so I hate to rub that in again, but uh, it How was big, great. What, what were some of the, what were like the big three biggest you sent me pictures of, but I never got the scores on them. Do you guys have rough, rough uh, estimates on those three bucks? Yeah, so Eric, who's a Kuyu customer um, of yours, uh, shot a 127, real bladed, palmated, uh -huh. four, four yeah. by four, just That's a beautiful buck. Yeah, just mass all over, and um, 
Uh, then we had uh, Tim Schinnenbarger, uh, from, he's uh, a wildlife uh, sculpture uh, guy, and uh, where's Kuyu? Um, he shot a 117 buck, kind of a narrow, heavy, yep. um, really neat buck. And then we got a couple of 112 bucks. Uh, Dean Heitzman yeah. from Pennsylvania, uh, who's completed the, the Super Slam and shot shot a lot of stuff. Uh, he, he got his best coos deer at 112, and we got another 112, and so it was uh, had you seen great... that Had you seen that 127 before you killed it? We saw, I didn't see it, but Hunter Haynes, whom you know, uh, who guides for us, uh, he saw the buck. Uh, with with another guy Seth Maskey, uh like two or three days before we got it, and then we started penetrating that country that he was running so hard he chased does up and over a hill. By the time we could get up and around where he was, he kind of gave us the slip and um, ended up glassing him up. Uh, I was by myself on the fifth day. I kind of took a flyer to try and get around in some country where I could look in there and found him and. Um, it, it was it was awesome though we we ended up uh, getting a 127 and a 112 on the same hill wow. uh the same day and um it was a great ending to to this year's hunt yeah. so um, Did you have any ideas yeah. that he was that big I mean Hunter kept saying he's big Jay he's, I think he's over 120 and um you know as soon as I glassed him up I immediately started digiscoping him and then after about oh 45 seconds or so I had to just stop and start concentrating because I realized how big he was um, <laughs> you know I didn't know he was 127 but he he was one of those bucks when you see you're just like I got to get that buck oh, yeah. or, you know I got got to get someone on it so yeah it was an Exciting. awesome time I look forward to having you down another time yeah, we had a great to to time a few years ago so buddy um I know you're busy thanks for all the of course, Jay. to you and uh look forward to the next time coming on. on with you congratulations on all your success with your uh with your podcast i know i get a ton of response from when i'm on it and uh just thank you so much for uh your interest in covering what we're doing sounds good buddy you take care god right, bless Jay. okay you too bye-bye guys make sure to go to kuyu's blog that's blog.kuyu.com and check out the kuyu film festival uh 2016 and there's four categories uh four winners a, a, a total in each category uh there's a pro and an amateur division and they've uh gotten a, many many films uh and uh hopefully my film uh will be in there as well and uh hope you guys enjoy so make sure to go check out uh, blog.kuyu.com and there's uh, all sorts of hunting videos on there. And this new Kuyu Film Festival uh, should be exciting. And um, there's a lot of great entries. So go check it out.